And what I'm going to cover for this week is how to implement file uploads in Spring. Some of you students ask, well, Professor, how do you upload a file in using Spring from a website? Um, I have that as one of my functional requirements, and you do not have that as one of your functional requirements in Timex. So I don't know how to do it. So I'm going to implement uh, a functional requirement called registration. Registration. An employee must be able to register in the system before logging for the first time. Ten pieces of information will be asked from the employee. And one of those pieces of information is going to be the picture. The picture of the employee. So the employee will be able to upload a picture. Type part resolver for file uploads. And we're going to see what that means and how it's involved. And also, I'm going to be covering how to distribute dynamic and static content on two different servers. So we're going to have our Tomcat server running our web application with dynamic content. And we're going to have another web server, probably an Apache web server, uh, feeding static content, like the files that we upload in the images of the project. And then... Uh, I'll be also sharing with you guys the last four functional requirements of Timex implemented. So the last four uh, will be registration, uh, timesheets marked paid, so they can be paid, paycheck report, and summary report for the CEO or president of the company. So these are the four final functional requirements that I'll be implementing, one of which will show you how to implement file uploads. Functional requirements implemented. All right, so enough of that. So how do we do file uploads? Well, what you have to do is go and Google it. Go to Google and do a search of Java Spring Upload File. So right here, Spring MVC Multiple File Upload Example. Uh, this is the one that I'm going to be sharing with you guys. I modify a little bit so that it will be easier. But it's basically from this author. It says, Spring MVC file upload example, and he uses um, these two jars, the Commons file upload jar and the Commons IO jar, which I have included also in the project. By the way, the project that I'm talking about, it's called the Upload a File Project. And um, I'm sharing with you guys the source code so make sure that if you're going to implement that in your project, you also copy those two jars from that project into your project. And it's it's basically very, very simple. I mean, it shows you in one page, this is the model that you're going to need. This is the controller that you're going to need. This is the validation that you're going to need. This is the page that will ask for the upload file. And this is the page that will give you feedback on the upload. That's it. And this is the spring configuration. It's a very small project. Okay, This is the page to upload. Basically, it will ask you what's the file that you want to upload. You click on upload, and you get feedback. Um, the validation will make sure that you that you have provided some kind of file path. If you don't provide a file path, it will say, please select a file, and it will not do anything. Otherwise, it will say, hey, the uploaded file is such and such. Very simple stuff. I have actually downloaded this zip 
modify it a little so that it will make things easier for you because he has other stuff in here that it's it's uh, missing or that you guys may not have knowledge of and that's it so you will discover that uploading a file to a web server has the following two alternatives so there's two ways of doing this the first is a store I'm sorry store the images the uploaded images as a file in the file system. So you're gonna you're gonna be able to ask the user to for the name of the file and then you're gonna upload it to the web server. And the web server, since the web server is running on some kind of file system, the web server is gonna be able to take that file and store it in the file system. And all it's gonna do is it's gonna create a record in a table somewhere in a database with the name of that image. That's the first approach. The second approach is to actually store the image, the binary code that makes up that file or image or whatever into the table in the database using either the image or the binary data types or the binary data types in, 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 in MySQL in the database server. I do not suggest to do that one the second option because especially if the images are big or they get modified frequently the reason being databases get bloated if you start uploading a whole bunch of files and those files are going to be up a field or a column in a table of image or binary data type and they can use up a whole lot of space so your databases will become really huge if there's a lot of uploads so that's what I do not suggest you implement it by storing it in the database so this sample project that I'm sharing with you guys shows how to implement option A which is store the images in the file system and in the database you just store the name of the image. Now when you test it, when you download it and test it, make sure that you also have Apache Web Server running with some kind of project. In my case I have my Timex PHP project running or whatever project you want it running because that's where the that's where the sample project, the Java sample project, will store the image or the file in the file system. And so, therefore, in this case, it will also take care of how to distribute dynamic and static content on two different servers. So we're going to have our Tomcat server running our Java project that allows upload of images or files into the file system and the path in that file system will correspond to the Apache web server web apps or what is it called I think it's called HT docs or something like that you know the 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 folder where where the Apache uh, web server looks for for any content and so on the other hand we're going to have the Apache web server running through a different port obviously I mean look um, on the local host if the both machines are going to be I mean if both servers are going to be running on the same machine then Tomcat will be running uh, on port 8080 and Apache could be running on port 80 for instance so how is this project implemented well this is a web project, therefore it has a web XML. Remember the web XML is the deployment descriptor for the application. It does things a little bit different than our Timex project. Um, basically you are going to be using the dispatcher servlet. That's the same as our Timex from the Spring Framework 
and we're going to be looking for any .htm and the URLs. But in this case, the, uh, it, this project is actually naming the context configuration file. That is the spring file. It's going to be named mvc dash dispatcher dash xml This is basically the spring configuration file. And it's going to also need to use this spring form tag library. So you guys are going to have to include this in your WebXML, those of you that require to upload um, files in your project. And basically what that means is that it's going to use some kind of tag libraries in the JSPs that will allow you to do um, uploading of files. Look at the Spring XML configuration file. And basically, um, it has the simple URL handle mapping that it says, okay, when you see this file upload.htm, it's going to be handled by the file upload controller. And this is the file upload controller. You're going to be injecting into this file upload controller, you're going to be injecting the form view, the success view some kind of upload file system path and some kind of upload file URL and finally a validator so this validator is going to be implemented by this class and the file upload controller is going to be implemented by this class both classes are going to be included in the project we're also going to have the resource bundle message source just like in our Timex project and we're going to have also the internal resource view resolver which are basically going to be JSPs just like in our Timex. So let's take a look at this file upload controller. What does it look like? Well it extends from the simple form controller because it's going to be asking for one piece of information. What is that information? It's going to be the path to the file that we want to upload. <coughs> And um, the file upload controller has a constructor, and the constructor will set the command class. Basically, the command class for this is not going to be string like you would imagine, you know, the path of the file, but it's actually going to be a file upload class. And the file upload class is this class that basically has just one property with the getters and setters. This property is going to be a multi-part file. What is a multi-part file? Well, a multi-part file is part of the Spring Framework and it's a representation of an uploaded file received in a multi-part request. If you guys remember from Web Programming and Design, Web 101, um, when you upload a file, it basically um, takes the entire file and uploads it into different parts. <clears throat> and so the web server captures, I think it's like 1,000 bytes or 4,000 bytes at a time. And if the file is bigger than that, it will keep asking for more and more. And it will basically upload multiple parts of this file until it has completely uploaded the entire file. <coughs> At which point the web server uh, delegates to the file system where the web server is running the um, the construction or the putting together of all these different multiple file parts into one file. But that's basically it. So file upload is just you know a class that has a file property of type multi-part file. That's what we're, we're going to be uploading. And so the constructor of the file upload controller, this is another way of doing it, is setting the command class to be that. And it's also setting the command name to be file upload form. This is going to be the name of the form that will allow us to 
um, set the command class. So our JSP will have a form, an HTML form called file upload form. And as we all know, the controller that extends from a simple form controller, all it has to do is override the unsubmit. Remember, the unsubmit is the method that gets executed when somebody says, OK, submit this form. And what we're going to be doing on the unsubmit is basically, OK, take the command object that is being passed from the JSP to the server and cast it into a file upload, because we know it's going to be a file upload. We're going to call it file. And then we're going to ask the file to get the file, the actual multi-part file. And we're going to save it here into the multi-part file variable. <clears throat> and then what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that it's not null. In other words, there is something there that we're going to upload. And then <clears throat> what we're going to be doing is we're going to actually modify the original file name um, into some kind of name that is probably going to be a timestamp of the of the time and date in which the file was uploaded. This is to avoid uh, the possibility that two different users might upload the same file name and we end up overwriting each other's uh, file. And we don't want to do that. So we want to make sure that all our file names that have been uploaded have a unique name. And the only way you can, we can guarantee that is by renaming them with the um, with a timestamp. <coughs> oh, I think I'm missing the HTTP here. Okay, here it is. So this is Spring Upload File Project. We asked. We didn't ask for any specific document. So according to the web XML the welcome file list will look for index.jsp. If you guys take a look at index.jsp, basically has a redirect to file upload.htm. In file load.htm is what the spring framework is going to look for in order to trigger the file upload controller. So the file upload controller shows the file upload JSP. This is it. Basically, it's just, let's take a look at the file upload form. I'm sorry, it's going to be the file upload form. OK, that's the form view. So it's going to look for a file upload form, and this is the file upload form.jsp. Basically, it's going to be a form. This is the tag that we're going to be using that will use the method post that the command name is file upload form. And the, the encryption type is going to be multi-part form data. This is what it's going to allow us to upload a multi-part file. <clears throat> in case there are any errors, then you know they will show up in here. This is all controlled by the Spring Framework through the form tags. Just you just have to make sure that the that the prefix form is being declared here as a tag library that comes from this tags, this tag library in the Spring Framework, and. You know, basically, it's going to say, please select a file to upload, and it's going to be an input of type file. OK. And there's going to be a button, a submit button called upload. And that's about it. And this is the page being rendered. So, Spring MVC file upload example. So, we're going to click on browse, and it's going to use the local client file system to ask for that file. 
So let's see, I'm going to look for a picture. Let's see, I'm going to use this picture. So it's going to be using, you know, out of my documents, out of my pictures, it's going to use the thumbs up um, icon for Java. And we're going to click on upload. As, as soon as we click on upload, it will send us to the file upload.htm. Um, and it will show us the picture. It will say, this is the name of the file that I just uploaded. Notice that it gives you at the thumbs up that JPEG name, but it will give us the timestamp time stamp when the file was uploaded. And it will say uploaded successfully and it's going to show it. Okay. So if I let's see, this says that it's on March 29 around 3.03 in the afternoon. So if I go back and browse and do it again and upload it it will show a different name it will show 304 in the afternoon JPEG so this file that we just download uploaded is a different file than the one that we uploaded initially um, where are they going to be uploaded? they're going to be uploaded into the file system into PHP projects, Timex PHP, and you can name any file, any path in the file system, but the idea is to uh, give it a path where another web server will be feeding these um, these pictures. The reason being, you don't want um, your project to be asking for um, files in the file system because it won't it won't allow you to do that. It will only allow you to to ask for files from a web server, not from the file system. This is for security reasons. So under Timex PHP, I created an uploads um, folder, and this is the first one that I used that I uploaded. This is the 3.03 .03 in the afternoon. And this one is the second one that I just uploaded. This is the one in the 3.04 in the afternoon. Um, so this will give you an idea of how this will work. So let's dig into the code. Uh, we were in the file upload controller. So when the file gets submitted, when the form gets submitted, and we're ready to upload that thumbs up JPEG, <coughs> we're going to take that command object and we're going to cast it into the file upload. And then we're going to tell the file upload to get us the file, which is a multi-part file. We want to make sure that it's not null, otherwise there's no file to upload. And then what we do is we get the original file name. We store it here in the file name. And then we just extract the extension of that file name. So if it's a JPEG or a GIF or any one of those, you know, uh, image type of extensions, we will be able to grab that file name extension. That's very important so we don't lose track of what type of image it is that we're trying to upload. And then we're going to ask the system to create a new date with the current time and date. We're going to get the time out of it and we're going to create a new timestamp with it. And then we're going to take that timestamp and we're going to convert it into a string and we're going to replace all the columns with dots. The reason being you cannot create files that contain that contain as part of their name that contain colon so you're going to have to replace all the columns with dots um, and then you append to that 
timestamp name, you append the file name extension. And that's going to be the name of the file that you're going to be using. Uh, and so then you're going to have an uploaded file system path injected, which in this case, the upload file system path is going to be my C drive, PHP projects, Timex, PHP, uploads. This is the folder that I was talking about. This folder, PHP projects, Timex, PHP, uploads. Now make sure that you have that front uh, backslash backslash if you are in the Windows system, or make sure you have a front slash if you are in the Unix system or in the Mac. <clears throat> but anyway, this is going to be the uh, path in the file system where the actual file would be uploaded. And so you inject that variable into the controller. And so the file name to create will be that path in the file system plus the new name that we're giving it. And so at this point, it's very simple. We just create a new file with that name. And then we take the multi-part. We get all the bytes from the multi-part file. And we tell our file utils. File utils is one of those um, classes from the Apache Commons jar that allows us to write bytes to an array. Um, write bytes to a file, I'm sorry. And and so we're just going to pass that n this file that we are creating and we're going to pass the bytes from the multi-part file and it will just create that file. And that's about it. And then what, what we're going to do is we're going to return a model in view and the model in view is going to be the file upload success as the name of the view. So um, you know that that's going to be transformed into a file upload success JSP with the name of the file. And we're also going to be passing a file URL. This, is, this URL is going to be injected. It's going to be injected into the upload file URL variable. So this upload file URL is going to be the name of a web server that is going to be feeding us that file as a picture. So in this case, it's going to be an Apache web server running local. It's an HTTP, so it's an Apache web server running on this machine, the local host, under this project, Timex PHP, under this folder, uploads. And, and so we're going to be passing that file URL and that file name to the file upload success JSP. So let's take a look at the file upload success JSP. And all it's going to do, it's going to say, OK, the file name is, and then you uh, print the file name, upload it successful, and then you create an image tag, and the source of that image is going to be the file URL that you're passing, front slash, the name of the file. So basically, it's going to be, it's going to be P column front slash front slash local host timex php uploads okay and then the name of the file uploaded so the first one that I upload is this this is it this is the a actual image that I uploaded that now it's sitting in the path of a web server that so that it can be fed into um, a browser. And that's about it. So that's basically how 
the file upload functionality is implemented using Spring Framework. And